Joined today by Lily Eskelson of the National Education Association. Thank you so much for talking with us today. Thrilled. Uh, so tell us a little bit why you came out to Neverage Nation. This is the most powerful place on the planet to be right now if you care about children. And of course, at National Education Association, every aspect of the child, their education, their health, their safety, uh, the environment, uh, their future, immigration, there is nothing that we're talking about today. Jobs, the economy, global competition that doesn't come back to, are you doing the right thing for our kids? And we know that if you're doing the right thing for kids, you're doing the right thing. It always works out that way. Yeah, are there, is, now are there any specific events here that have been really attractive to you? I went to the Parent con uh, Caucus this oh, morning. Did you? Oh, these are very, very powerful men and women who say we're moms and dads and we want everything. We want everything because it's for our kids. And by the way, we don't just want it for our kids. We want it for your kids. We want it for kids that haven't been born yet. Uh, we want it for the world's children. And like I said, it means that they talked about everything. What I see as a teacher is um, these are the folks that probably don't make their living blogging. If they do have a blog uh, that they get paid for, they probably don't get paid very much for it. These are This is not the corporate, you know, usual suspects. There's no big stars here from CNN. Um, what you have are incredibly powerful, passionate people who are smart enough, wicked smart, that they write something and they have a following. They only have a following because what they're saying makes sense to thousands of other people who have their own following. So they have they have tapped into this new media that says it doesn't. You don't have to wait for a 60-second soundbite on um, Fox News. You can say something meaningful and substantive. So I can't tell you how many of these folks have come up to me and said, "You're a teacher." Here's what I need you to know about what I want for my kid. That was something I was going to ask you. Say, at the, the parents' caucus, say, what, what were they saying they want for their kids and for other people's kids? They want to stop treating children like they're little machines and that everything you need to know about a kid comes out on a computerized bubble sheet, which is music to my ears as a teacher because that's what we're fighting against. We're fighting against this corporatization of what it means to teach and what it means to learn. So all we need from a school, um, all we need from a teacher is get those test scores up by any means necessary and there that we're done. So we don't need foreign languages, we don't need the arts, we don't need thinking skills. What we need are when given four choices, you're a really good guesser and you can pick, that's what the business community is looking for, right? No, no, we're looking for people who can create and invent and communicate people who are passionate about the world around them, people who care about something beyond their own you know, immediate gratification. And so to hear parents saying, we're mad as hell, and we're not going to take it anymore, and we will join with the teachers saying, we refuse to let our kids be that number on a test score. We're going to fight for something better for them. I feel like I found friends here, incredible friends. Now, uh a, a lot of parents probably don't have the time to follow everything that's going on in Congress, and um, a number of our viewers are parents, or at least they have parents. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, what, like, can you give them a little bit of an update legislatively? What's going on with education right now? The the first immediate need that we see at National Education Association is the crisis we're in that we are about to lose up to three hundred thousand teacher and education support jobs by the um, end of this summer. So the clock is ticking. That we know of, no one has laid off the children. The children are still going to show up on the first day of school, only they might have 300,000 less teachers to help them. Um, so what they'll do is they'll do what they did the year I taught sixth grade and they gave me 39 sixth graders. So all they're going to do is load up the remaining teachers classes. It's bad for kids. It's bad when you're saying we want to personalize education and get to know and care about every blessed child. So in Congress, as of yesterday, we lost a very big battle, but we haven't lost the war. 
We are now regrouping and we're finding some way to bring to the Senate and the House a repackaged um, Save the Teachers Jobs bill that would give some emergency one-time funding to school districts so they don't have to lay off all of those teachers. And we are going to find a way to bring that uh, to Congress and we need every parent who cares about their child's learning environment, that they don't want their kid in an overcrowded classroom. We need them to join the educators in calling Congress saying, when the jobs bill for educators comes up, this is about my kid and I need your support. Now, what would you want to say to Mitch McConnell, who helped keep some of this from moving forward already? Mm -hmm. um, like, what would you say to him? I mean, Mitch McConnell did an incredibly hurtful thing when Senator Reid brought up the, um, the bill uh, that we said this at least deserves to see the light of day. It did have in the package what would be offset to pay for it, and Senator McConnell objected. All it takes is one out of a hundred to say, I object, and it goes to the end of the line. So instead of saying this is going to be treated like the crisis it truly is, one lone senator said, I don't want to hear about saving these classrooms and making sure there are enough teachers for our kids. And I don't even want to hear how you were proposing to pay for it. Um, so they said, uh, if you don't pay for it, we don't, you know, we can't afford it. Enough smart people got together and said, we figured out a way to pay for it. And he said, even so, I don't want to hear it. Okay, well, my last question, our, our largest base of viewers is grassroots activists. Um, so I always like to ask people, what can our viewers watching home do right now to get involved on this issue? You call your senators, you call your congressmen, you leave a message, you email, you bang on those doors, and you say you have the chance of saving over 300,000 educator jobs. Now, as much as I care about my teachers' jobs, those parents are going to be calling because those teachers are providing something vital to their children, to that community's children. Call and say, this is a, a bill for kids. This is something that helps our kids. You only get one year to be a high school senior. You only get one year to be a second grader. So don't tell these kids that they're not too big to fail. They are too small to have a voice. And it has to be an adult's voice that makes that call. And it does make a difference. Okay, well, Lily Eskison, thank you for talking with us. Thank you to the NEA. And, uh, enjoy the conference. A pleasure. Thank you.